The automatic flight control system was originally developed as a means of reducing the cyclical loading on B-52s during aerial refueling. Studies conducted at Boeing Wichita, analysis of data from previous refueling tests, and simulator studies all indicated that we could expect a significant reduction in cyclical loading through the development of such a system. The final version of the automatic flight control system permits the pilot to control the airplane on autopilot through commands introduced into the normal airplane control system. That is to say, the control column, the control wheel, and the rudders. Anytime a system that affects the flight handling characteristics is added to an airplane, the question foremost in most people's minds, particularly in the minds of the pilots who will be flying the airplane, is what new techniques are required and what changes in techniques will be required to operate the system. When using the automatic flight control system in the aerial refueling mode, for instance, certain changes in technique are required. These changes are due mainly to the extremely light control forces in the pitch axis. Smooth, even pressures are required in order to control the airplane in the refueling envelope. Any attempt by the pilot to put in a spiked input will only result in autopilot and boom disconnect. Pitch axis has another significant feature. Automatic stabilizer trim follow-up is provided to take care of any CG shifts or any gross weight changes while in contact. The roll axis of the aerial refueling mode pretty much takes care of itself. It's a stabilizing influence in straight and level flight and will maintain a near wings level attitude during contact. This reduces a pilot work requirement in the roll axis to an irreducible minimum. If a roll correction is desired, however, due to a position change in the envelope or due to a maneuver by the tanker, the pilot wheel force requirement is initially slightly higher than with the manual airplane. If the roll input is dictated by a change in position requirement and thus is of short duration, the automatic flight control system will return the airplane to a wings level attitude when the wheel forces are relaxed. However, if the roll input is a result of a bank on the part of the tanker and thus is held for any significant duration, the roll axis of the autopilot will seek this new bank angle as a reference and will then maintain stabilized flight at this bank angle. This reduces the requirement on the pilot after the new attitude is established. The steering technique at this new bank angle is exactly the same as for wings level. The automatic flight control system also incorporates a new electromechanical yaw damper. This yaw damper has been developed as an electronic augmentation of the presently installed mechanical yaw dampers. Because of this subsystem, the yaw stability of the airplane has been improved to such an extent that the airplane will not touch roll. In this condition, touch roll is initiated with the yaw damper disengaged. Engagement of the yaw damper results in a very positive damping of the condition. This high degree of stability in yaw alleviates a serious secondary control problem when in contact at high gross weights. The yaw damper has its own control switch and is independently powered. It is not required that any other autopilot functions of the automatic flight control system be engaged in order to utilize the yaw damper. The system should be used throughout the flight regime. Its advantages will be quickly apparent during manual flight at high altitudes, during instrument approaches, and of course during high weight refueling. The automatic flight control system also incorporates a low level mode. Use of this mode will also require some changes in pilot technique. 
I should probably say some elimination of pilot technique since this mode eliminates many of the pilot effort and attention requirements normally associated with low level operation. Some of the significant features of this mode are light force requirements which permit smooth positive control of the airplane attitude, a completely neutral stability in the pitch and roll axis which results in a zero pilot force requirement to maintain any desired attitude, and an automatic heading hold device that permits the system to maintain the airplane heading anytime the bank angle is less than eight degrees and the roll force on the wheel is less than approximately four pounds. The heading hole capability can be clearly demonstrated by the use of asymmetrical thrust. Second station steering, bomb nav tie-in capabilities are present in the low level mode. This is particularly advantageous to the pilot during short look and long look maneuvers because it permits the navigator to retain the steering function while the pilot has full control of the pitch and yaw axis. The low level autopilot mode also has the automatic stabilizer trim follow-up feature similar to that of the aerial refueling mode. This feature will maintain the airplane in trim regardless of configuration or airspeed. The addition of the low level and the aerial refueling modes to the basic MA-2 autopilot resulted in several significant hardware changes and additions. To the air crew, however, the most pertinent and certainly the most important of these changes are changes in switch locations and the addition of controlling switches for the various modes of the autopilot. Certain interlock functions have been incorporated in this system to prevent inadvertent actuation or engagement of a mode when it is not desired. The interlocks for the low level mode are as follows. In order to engage this mode, it is first required that the elevator servo switch be in. The normal autopilot must be engaged. All other automatic pilot modes must be disengaged except for the altitude hold, which may or may not be engaged. These modes are the automatic vocalizer, the automatic glide slope, and the aerial refueling mode. Both the turn and the roll trim knobs must be in detent. Now the low level switch may be engaged. If the low level mode is engaged while the altitude hold is on, the altitude hold will automatically trip off and cannot be re-engaged. None of the normal automatic modes can now be engaged with the exception of second station steering. The aerial refueling mode of the automatic flight control system also incorporates a series of interlocks. In order to engage the aerial refueling mode, the elevator servo must be in. The normal autopilot must be engaged. Once again, the altitude hold may or may not be engaged.
fueling master switch must be on. The slipway doors must be fully open. The turn and roll trim knobs must be in their respective detents. All automatic autopilot modes must be disengaged. The aero refueling mode may now be turned on. If the aerial refueling mode is engaged while the altitude hold is on, the altitude hold will automatically trip off and cannot be re-engaged. None of the other normal automatic modes can now be engaged. The automatic flight control system has certain other features and characteristics which we should mention here. Every pilot is concerned with the safety aspects of any new system. This system, due to its nature, due to the fact that it will be operated in close proximity to other aircraft in the aerial refueling mode, and the fact that it will be operated close to the ground in the low level mode, makes it mandatory that it incorporates certain features to provide for the safety of the airplane and crew. These features have been incorporated in the automatic flight control system. In the aerial refueling mode, for example, certain of these features have been provided which would be of use during emergency breakaway or during any other condition when control must be returned to the manual control system. Autopilot disengagement and simultaneous boom disconnect can be affected in several ways. Should either receiver pilot exceed approximately 40 pounds on the wheel in the roll axis, the autopilot will automatically disengage and the boom will automatically disconnect and retract. This is called a roll overpower disconnect. If either or both receiver pilots exceed approximately 30 pounds on the column in the pitch axis, the autopilot once more trips off and the boom retracts. This is called a pitch overpower disconnect. We still retain the standard methods of disengaging the autopilot. The autopilot disconnect buttons on the columns the autopilot master switch and the master servo and gauge switch operate the same as on the unmodified MA2 autopilot. In general, any disconnect initiated by the receiver will result in a simultaneous boom and autopilot disengagement. Disconnects that are initiated by the tanker, such as limit disconnects and boom operator punch off, will only result in boom disconnects and will not affect the automatic flight control system operation. The safety features incorporated in the aerial refueling mode are also present in the low level mode. The pitch overpower disconnect and the roll overpower disconnect both operate precisely the same as previously discussed. The low level mode, however, demonstrates some additional characteristics which we will mention here. The principal features of the low-level mode are a G-limiting device and a bank angle limiting device. The G-limiter is incorporated for structural protection and operates as a stick stiffener. When the magic number is reached, approximately 1.8 G in the positive direction or two-tenths in the negative direction, the G-limiter actuates and starts moving the column in the proper direction to relieve the G-load. If the pilot doesn't go along with it, but persists in holding the column in its original position, the forces he is required to hold will build up to the pitch overpower disconnect level and the autopilot will disengage. As a result of the logic circuits of the automatic flight control system, the transition from the low level mode to the manual control system after G limit disconnect is smooth and without G transients. The bank angle limiter works in a similar fashion to the G limiter. The bank angle limit of the system is approximately 30 degrees. As the airplane approaches this bank angle, the bank angle limiter starts stiffening the wheel in the roll axis. If the pilot attempts to exceed the bank angle limit, the force required on the control wheel will build up rapidly and cause a roll overpower disconnect.
In summary, the automatic flight control system has been developed and installed on B-52 aircraft for the purpose of reducing cyclical loads and extending the service life of these aircraft. The changes required in pilot technique are minor compared to the major reduction in pilot effort realized with this system. The many Air Force pilots and Boeing pilots who flew the automatic flight control system during demonstration and evaluation phases were unanimous in their opinions that pilot fatigue was greatly reduced and airplane handling qualities were much improved. The increased airplane stability when operating on the automatic flight control system results in improved operations throughout the flight envelope.